Seeler and Connor Williams, are they here and expected to participate? Um, we have pretty much, uh, like the most of the off season, we've had pretty much um, everyone here. There's been individuals that have um, have their individual situations to take care of. I, um, as far as this camp, um, Sealer will be here. Uh, Connor won't, um, which we, we've been in direct communication. I'm not going to get necessarily into the nuts and bolts of his business here. Um, but I have... 89 guys I would love to talk about that are here, that are going to be um, out here today. <sighs> so Connor is the only one that, that is not here? Um, uh, yes, I, th I believe that's the case. Yes. I, I guess it's an important distinction. This is an excused absence. Um, no, it's not, not excused, but again, we've been in co uh, communication, so... Um, not, not worry about it, worry about the dudes that are here for sure. When you're in this situation and, and the off season is time to take care of business, do you understand a player's perspective when they try to take care of business? Well, well, I, I try to understand every player's perspective. Um, I think that's part of my job um, is to be empathetic, to, to you know, best come to a solution. So um, there's a bunch of things that come up, a bunch of stuff that – uh, have come up this off season that will, came up last off season that will come up next off season. So that's that's always something that you're um, juggling and working with players to um, have your team perform at its highest ability. Mike, there's a lot of excitement in the area right now with the Heat and the Panthers. As you've been out, uh, especially at Heat games, have people like looked at you and smiled and said, "Okay, it's the golden sir. See, I've always liked you. This question fires me up because I, I've had, you know, it's kind of, I've been frustrated with myself because I, I don't think I've really adequately articulated that experience. It, it has been um, unbelievable. The, the support, the excitement, um, just the general enthusiasm um, for uh, the, the Dolphins, you know, when, when I'm at an event that is, you know, uh, an organization's pinnacle of working for an entire year to get into um, these uh, playoff games that are hard to get to. Um, that by itself has been um, unbelievable. I've tried to share it to the, with the team as much as I can. They know they feel it when they're um, out and about as well. So uh, the, the, the team within the, this building is very aware um, and uh, definitely finds exuberance from all of the the juice that that is in South Florida right now. It's an it, it's the, the really that's the first virus. I caught the second virus during your during your time with the Heat, especially because you're close to to Spolster right on the floor. Are you are you gleaning anything from that from a coaching point standpoint? I know it's a different game. But there's got to be some of that similar similarities of things that you see that you may be able to Absolutely. incorporate the, yourself. Like the after, um, you know, I, I, the best words I could come up for uh, texting right after um, they won Game Seven was something that he knew what I was getting at. But adversity is opportunity. You, you I say that to the team all the time. I, I really, really believe that. Um, and I don't care how sick of sick anybody ever gets of hearing it. I think it's true to the to what life and professional sports and team is all about. And you you want to talk about uh, a team that has utilized adversity for their own gain. Um, that those lessons, especially now, um, you know, by and large, uh, you know, almost every player on our on our team is is watching their season, the heat season unfold. And it's hard not to, you know, you hear all these people so surprised. I feel like there's a, a, a sportscaster every, you know, a national sportscaster, definitely not local, but a nationally sportscaster every week or every game that's saying, oh, yeah, they have no chance. Um, that, you know, is the pinnacle of success in sports is um, a group of individuals um, working towards a goal and not letting anything stand in their way. So they're, they're, it, you know, that just 
for example, the last game they just won. You know, there was a lot of um, – I, I, to be able to look at a, a sports team and say, you know what, um, I don't necessarily know how they're going to do it, but I'm not going to bet against them, I think is one of the co- – like I mean, right? I, I wasn't. I like to keep my money. So um, they – I, I think it it it's an example for all teams. I think we're very fortunate to see it firsthand and feel like we're um, indirectly a part of it. Um, but you know, I, I I think it also goes for just people in general. I think it's a it's a life lesson that you, you it's amazing what you can accomplish when you really, really, really commit. Like one of the eighty nine guys that are here is Jalen Phillips. And I felt last year during the course of the season, we just saw this arc. This kid just kind of explode. What have you seen this off season? What does Vic see in him right now? What do you see as this arc of development? Um, I, I, I see, uh, I've seen him practice at a level um, that's far superior than any other pr- um, level of practice that I've seen from him since I've been here. So take that for what it's worth. You know, you don't, you don't, I think it's very important not to get ahead of yourselves. Um, it, it's hard, um, very hard for people on the outside because, like, you're excited about the team. So you, you're thinking of um, September. Um, we're thinking a day at a time. Um, and all I know is the, you know, the last practices I've seen him have have been the best practices that he's had. Um, I think that's very encouraging. Um, you know, that one, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, Vic and I shared on his interview, um, was his appreciation for that, um, for Jalen in particular, um, who he was very high, high on coming out. So, um, very happy with where he's at. He is goal oriented, great, great human being, um, that has, uh, his vision set on what he wants to do. And now he's just trying to uh, take care of it each and every day. And it's cool to watch um, a, a, a young player um, not get caught up in September and get more focus on June 6th, which is the only day that exists. Mike, just off of Baldy's question, uh, obviously Bradley got here midseason, and he just mentioned Jalen. Have you seen anything behind the scenes with those two as they try to maybe build their – Well, well, well what's cool is uh, – you know, I really appreciate you, you, you guys. You'll notice it today. Um, just in general, they gravitate to each other, um, and that to me speaks at sp- speaks of everything that I want um, in a team. I don't want players trying to have success in spite of someone. I want players competing, making each other better, and trying to be the best versions of themselves. So they they have been, um, you know. They, they want to be a, a, a great pair, and they want to be a part of a, a great defense, and they're um, doing handling that the right way instead of just wishing and hoping um, they're working. They've, you know, between um, Coach Fangio, who has, you know, coached elite edge players since I was um, before kindergarten maybe, um, then, uh, you know, with Coach Slowick and, and Coach Harmon's been helping out. That I've seen significant gains and improvements on our edge play that I'm that I'm fired up about. And you know, all you can do is really um, position yourself to be at your very best for when pads come on in in uh, July. Um, practice three for that position, and that's what I've seen them do: working on footwork, hand placement, um, disruption. Um, the, they're, they're a handful, and that's a good thing. Um, not the best thing um, for a practice that you're trying to orchestrate some sort of success, um, but you'd, you'd rather practice against it than have a, a surprise come week, whatever, which is imperative for, for, for really our offense and defense. Our defense needs um, uh, high pro- productivity from edge play as well as you have to go against productive edge play because 
the really good teams generally have that, um, whether it's a 4-3 or 3-4, um, and you're going to have to figure out how to, how to, to um, execute offense against that. Which regarding Fangio, I know obviously he's a defensive coordinator, but I'm curious in the short amount of time he's been here, how has he positively impacted the offense and the way you guys see things, just having that you know, experience in mind to bounce things off of? Phenomenal question. We're just pumping out great questions today. I'm proud of all of you guys. Um, the, you know, an unintended consequence, it's something that you know as a football coach, but you, it's not steadfast to the forefront of your th thought process um, when you're making – decisions like that. Okay, who, what defense do you want to run? Who do you want in charge of it? Um, your mind goes straight to, I want the best defense we can have. I want the best defensive coordinator we can have. I, you know, I think um, that has been accomplished. Um, a subset unintended consequence is that, you know, the, the, the technique with which they um, perform their assignments really takes advantage of um, poor technique offensively, meaning that you, they, the, the way they pattern match and the way they, um, they, they really play with vision, uh, as, a, as a receiver, it's the best training you could get. As a tight end, it's the best training you can get. All these route runners are getting this elite training because they're getting made pay um, when their technique's off. If they're if they're not vertical enough on their stem. Traditionally, from a coach's perspective, I have to say, yeah, this worked. However, in game situation, it probably won't. And that you're kind of selling to them and you have to grab a game clip and whatever. It is so much more efficient and, and better for the offensive coaches when um, something that we've emphasized doesn't get done and the defense makes you pay. Well. You know, we're, we're pushing that envelope on both sides of the ball now where and, and my ultimate desire, I don't want I want a good team. I don't want to go out there today and have the defense dominate the offense or vice versa. I want guys trading punches, handling adversity. All of those things happen when schemes are. Good answer, good answer. I mean, you're just going to leave me hanging? We had, like, I know the, the microphone's not going to pick up that random pterodactyl sound that I just heard. But that, okay. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? Um, so, and, and what we're starting to see is um, there'll be 11 guys out there, one offensive player will be off, and the play will, will not work at all or one defensive player will be off and it will be a, a big play. That's what, for me as a head coach, that's how I go to practice. I, don't, I want punches traded left and right. That, that's the game that we play. Um, and that's, that's how you get better at it. And that's, that's what I'm starting to see. Unintended consequence of Vic and his system is uh, the, the system is so sound and true and coached um, the defensive coaching staff has done a phenomenal job um, uh, giving answers to the test through technique to the players that um, both sides of the ball are benefiting for sure. When you play as a play caller, when you play a team that's predominantly zone, and I don't know if mm -hmm. it's a predominantly zone, what challenges does that create for, for you knowing that the defense primarily has the eyes on the quarterback? Well, the teams that are capable – of playing good zone defense make you earn everything and really, they really force teams to execute and execute across the board. Um, whereas, you know, even great man to man coverage teams, um, one guy steps on the side of his foot, right? Where, where it's, um, where, in, in zone defense, you, you really have to get your depth. The quarterback has to be precise with his footwork so that his timing is right, his eyes, his progression, the distribution has to be correct. Um, that makes it harder to be a good zone defense um, uh, on the front end because there's a lot of people working together. But if you invest time into it, um, 
So there it is again. More pterodactyls. Um, you invest time, and, it, and it, it is a slower build, but the ultimate end result is that you struggle to have one player to beat you. You know, like, it's <laughs> confiscated. <laughs> we had our first confiscation. Hey, man. We're all accountable. Um, so it, it is more of a process zone defense, um, but the, I think it, the rewards you reap, um, you know, when it's sound are, are huge because it, it really put, puts pressure on offenses to execute um, with the entirety and not one or two people. Uh, Mike, How about Eric Ezukanma? Uh, where have you kind of seen him progress this offseason? So, so challenged him. I was on the phone with him before, um, you know, the this offseason, just checking out and checking in on how he was doing, just knowing that it was going to be a big year. You know, you go zero to sixty. Um, you know, he did get active um, at the very end of the season, but for the most part, um, you know. It, it, it almost feels like a red shirt year for him, um, which it's not. You have to learn a ton. And he knew that um, we have a very talented receiving core. So he had no – all of those um, learning um, lumps that really every rookie incurs, but specifically wide receivers that um, are hearing huddles for the first time. Um, he knew he's going to have to be on his – um, on his stuff at not just one but multiple positions. And he has um, probably made the biggest gains from um, last year to this year in ownership of the offense. So uh, what that does, that, that allows him the opportunity to um, try to, you know, carve out a, a specific role for himself because otherwise he wouldn't have a shot. There's too many, you know, the, the specifically the receiving core that he's um, – uh, practicing within is, is competitive and deep with um, bona fide info players that I've been around. So the challenge is real, but he's put himself in a position to um, really compete uh, for opportunities, which is um, I'm happy for him as it stands. And, uh, you know, moving forward, I can't wait to see what he does.